The area in our solar system where the gas giants formed has two significant differences from the inner area where the rocky planets formed. First, these relates to the chemical elements making up the matter. Heavier elements like iron, magnesium, silicon and even oxygen, which are fairly abundant in the inner part of our solar system, start to represent smaller and smaller amounts of the elements present as we get further and further away from the star. Instead, nearly all the matter is made up from hydrogen, with significant amounts of helium. The other elements represent only a tiny fraction of all the matter present. The other factor is the further away you get from the main star, space becomes significantly colder, until you reach something which is known as the frost line. However, the title is a little misleading, so it's not a sharp dividing line, so it relates to a range of chemicals which have different freezing points. And the location of these points also changes with changes in the star itself. Still, beyond this region, hydrogen is bonded with other elements to form water, ammonia, and methane, along with a few other different chemical compounds, will result in a colder environment in this region and start to form tiny ice crystals. These two factors are important in forming the outer planets, because in order to get a planet started, you need a relatively dense clump of matter of about one meter across, held together by chemical bonds or relatively weak electrostatic forces. With the environment beyond the frost line, consisting mainly of hydrogen and helium, those elements actually can't form planets because the relatively weak forces involved can't hold enough of the mass together for gravity to then accelerate planetary growth. Instead, the gas giants require something else to get them started. In this case, it's a combination of the ice crystals, especially water ice, and the relatively few heavier elements which have made it out that far. These will very slowly start to increase in size until these dirty snowballs have the critical mass needed to start pulling in more matter with the force of gravity they're now generating. Of course, nearly all the matter that's going to be attracted is going to be hydrogen and helium. Again, because these planets are starting to form at a considerable distance from the central star, the solar wind won't be stripping these mini atmospheres as they're forming around the small bodies. Like the inner planets, these planetary small bodies, once formed, start to grow larger and larger as they suck in more material from around them. However, there's a significant difference here. Although there will likely be collisions between these bodies as they grow, because at a relatively early stage, the vast majority of the mass of these planetesimals is going to be an atmosphere of hydrogen and helium. Destructive collisions are going to be far less likely than the inner part of the solar system. Instead, two bodies of mainly gas are likely to merge and become a larger body. The result of this is though planetesimal seeds may have taken longer to form in the outer part of the solar system, the growth phase is far more rapid than for the inner planets, probably meaning that the gas giants have accumulated most of their mass after only about 3 million years. However, that isn't the end of the development in the outer part of our solar system. There's still comets, moons and planetary rings to consider.